The other interesting pattern of growth that's actually important for, for population ecology is the idea of nutrient limitation versus nutrient excess. Remember that how much carrying capacity you're going to have depends on the availability of nutrients that exist in the ecosystem. So if the nutrients are very limited for the producers, the productivity is going to be low and the carrying capacity is going to be very, very low because there's not a lot of pro producers doing their jobs, so that can't maintain a very large pyramid of energy. Remember we talked about that on the very first topic. But if the opposite happens and all of a sudden you have an excess of nutrients, that means that the, the, the producers can explode and produce as much as they possibly can. Now, that seems like a good thing for the ecosystem because now you have a lot of producers, all of a sudden you can have awesome, awesome amounts of life. But that actually can have detrimental effects to the to food web. For starters, if you have an excess of productivity, everybody's going to want to eat all, the, all those producers. It's going to send cascade effects of bottom-up control where there's going to be so much food at the bottom that the whole food web now can grow. Everybody can grow at once, pretty much. But in those kinds of circumstances, the animals which are better adapted for the environment, the more competitive animals, the ones which are more dominant, they will tend to overcompete everybody else for those new resources and they will actually decrease the biodiversity of the food web because of that. So too much productivity can actually hurt the food web sometimes. All right? The best example of that actually is the process of eutrophication. That's what you see in the screen over here. Now, eutrophication happens naturally in lakes, and we already talked about it when we did e ecosystem ecology. But here I'm showing you again the kind of idea of what's going on. Now, basically, the lake, when it's the very beginning of its life, it's called an oligotrophic lake. It's a clean lake. It barely has life living in it. It doesn't have too many nutrients gathered inside the lake. But throughout the type, type, lifetime of the lake, animals living in the lake, organisms living in the lake will, will die off, and they will settle to the bottom or where they will be decomposed by decomposers. Meanwhile, rain and runoff from, from areas around the lake are carrying even more nutrients inside the lake. So throughout the life of the lake, both because the lake itself, the life of the lake itself is dying, and because runoff from the outside is actually adding more, the lake will actually increase its level of nutrients inside the lake. Now remember, the more of these nutrient levels increases, the more productivity can actually occur. The more decomposition will occur, and then the more productivity will follow. And the lake throughout time will become more and more nutrient-rich. And the bottom of the lake will become more and more filled with that detritus, is what we call the dead stuff that lives in the bottom. So you will go from oligotrophic to mesotrophic, and finally to eutrophic, which is the final stage of the life of the lake. Now, on this final stage, what happens is what you see in the pictures on the top le left, and which is also represented on this diagram in the top right. Light from the sun will continue to hit the surface of the lake, where, it's, where the warm layer, where all the producers will try to live. And that layer will be very, very oxygenated because the producers are living there, constantly doing photosynthesis and adding oxygen to the, to the layer. But then this excess of producers, there's so many of them that everything that lives dies, you know, so eventually those producers will die off and sink to the bottom of the lake where they will gather as even more nutrients, right? So with time, it gets so saturated with nutrients in the bottom that decomposition will increase more and more because more and more dead stuff is gathering. The decomposers that's living in the bottom will go crazy. It's like a feast of decomposition. But decomposition produces uh, carbon dioxide and other toxic gases. So as, as, and actually the, the nutrients will actually gather to toxic levels in the bottom of the lake. And it's going to get saltier down there. It's going to be cooler because the, the sunlight it starts to be blocked by all those producers which are living in the surface. The green that you see over there, there's barely any sunlight hitting the bottom anymore. So it's going to be colder, heavier, saltier, and full of dead organic material that's decomposing and producing toxic gases and, and nutrients that are becoming so packed that are becoming toxic levels of nutrients. And the oxygen levels down there are going to drop immensely. All right, because what's going to happen is that that layer of cooler water on the, uh, right underneath the photic layer is actually going to block the flow of oxygen into the lower water. And when you get to that point, life in the bottom of the lake becomes impossible because it becomes air deprived. So even everything that lives down there will die off because they are going to be unable to breathe down there. So all you have left is a layer of productivity on the top and a dead lake on the bottom. Now, this will continue for a long time until finally uh, even the producers themselves will start to starve from oxygen. 
and become toxified by the water. And then the lake will actually finish with a thin layer of producers on the top and a dead, dead detritus lake in the bottom. That is a eutrophication process, and it does happen naturally. Over centuries, the lake actually becomes more and more nutrients. However, unfortunately, cultural eutrophication is increasing lately. Discharge from sewage, uh, discharge from untreated sewage from the cities or treated sewage, nitrogen coming from, from uh, acid rain and other things like that, discharge of phosphates for plantations, uh, nitrates and phosphates from natural sources, uh, manure runoff from all the things that all the animals that we're growing, uh, inorganic fertilizer like nitrates and phosphates which are being added to the lawns of people, erosion and runoff from cultivation from areas of, of construction, um, and all other kinds of stuff that we do are constantly going to be adding more and more nitrates and phosphates to the water of these lakes. And then that makes the eutrophication process speed so much that instead of taking centuries, it will happen in just a few decades. And then the lake will go from oligotrophic to eutrophic or the dead lake in, in a matter of years as opposed to just uh, many, many times. Now... You notice how the difference in between a neutrophic lake and a non-neutrophic lake in this picture here on the left side, how the water can can become completely covered with algae versus not, you know, and uh, there's lots of things that humans can try to do to help that. Uh, for, uh, by but the most important thing is to reduce or impact uh, by that you see in the picture on the right side and all the things that we're doing that actually are adding um, these nutrients to the water. Because ultimately, it's very hard to clean the lake and remove those nutrients from the water and remove the excess of productivity and all of those kinds of things. So it's a very important thing. But what this is showing in terms of population ecology is that when there's unlimited nutrients, you have a, a lot of growth. You know, So it's kind of like the exponential growth. But at the end, what that end up, ends up causing, it's catastrophic for, for the ecosystem. By the way, this process will also happen along the coastlines and where we all, the rivers and all the water that runs off from our cities that goes straight into the ocean will also gather up all those nutrients and dump into the ocean where the algae will, will feast on all of those excess nutrients and then the eutrophication could happen near the coastlines too. And that's why sometimes the beach has covered with algae and you see that, oh, the disgusting stuff. Well, it's because of all the sewage and all the lawn and all the fertilizer and all the other things that we're learning out of our cities. So it's same similar process that kills the lakes will end up killing the coastal oceans, which remember are supposed to be the most uh, productive areas of, of the ocean in terms of productivity per, per square uh, area. So this means that the human impact is very crucial and it's uh, we're destroying the habitats of the world by ironically adding too much nutrients, causing an explosion of the population uh, to the coastal areas and to the lakes.